Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions. The portfolio on this occasion is education and skills. A reminder that if uh, anyone wants to ask a supplementary question, I invite them to press the request to speak buttons during the relevant question. Uh, and I call question number one, Jamie hawker -Jones. To ask the Scottish Government for an update on support they are providing for modern apprenticeships. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government have agreed the Skills Development Scotland budget for 23-24 and SDS have completed contract awards to support up to 25,500 new modern apprenticeship starts in 23-24. Official statistics published by SDS on the 23rd of May this year report 25,447 modern apprenticeship starts by the end of quarter four in 22-23 and statistics also show the number of apprentices in training across the country is the highest ever at around 39,000. SDS provides an all-age career service in every local authority area, highlighting the options available to people across Scotland, including modern apprenticeships. And SDS undertakes further activity together with employers to highlight the importance of modern apprenticeships, particularly through Scottish Apprenticeship Week. We continue to work closely with SDS to monitor and support modern apprenticeships throughout Scotland. Jimmy Hogger Johnson. Last month, the Scottish Training Federation stated that the Scottish Government's delay in setting its skills and employability budget has led to 75 redundancies since April. Cabinet Secretary, last year there was an apprenticeship freeze and this year's vital budgets, including the individual training account budget, have been delayed. So why are apprentices and training providers always this Government's last consideration? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I thank the member for his question. Of course, he will recognise some of the financial challenge that this government has been presented by, not least in relation to inflationary pressures. That has meant we've had to recalibrate budgets right across the Scottish Government. So I don't make an apology for that today, but I recognise the challenge that was presented to me, certainly, I think, in the first two weeks of undertaking posts as Cabinet Secretary. It is important to say that we have had an increase slightly in relation to the number of modern apprenticeships we have. I outlined that in my initial response. I recognise the challenge from the Federation. I'm delighted we've now been able to commit to that funding and move forward but I'm committed as well as Cabinet Secretary and obviously working alongside um, Mr Day in that respect to working with the sector to ensure that we do support the rollout of modern apprenticeships. These are really important qualifications, I think, to supporting um, people into work and I think it's hugely important that across government we take cognizant particularly of the outcomes from yesterday's skills review in that respect. There are a number of recommendations in the Withers review for the delivery of skills in the future and what that could mean. And I'm very aware as Cabinet Secretary have a plethora of different reports coming to fruition at a similar time and it's important that we have an overarching strategic direction from government as we move these reports and their uh, respective recommendations forward. A couple of supplementaries. They'll need to be brief as will the responses. First Gordon MacDonald. Thanks, Presiding Officer. On Monday, Scotland's leading electrical bodies were celebrating a boost for the industry after receiving confirmation of financial su support for the next intake of electrical apprentices and adult trainees. Fiona Harper of the Scottish GIB said, the second guarantee of additional places means we can continue to train and develop a significant number of skilled electricians. Amidst enormous pressure on government budgets due to Tory economic mismanagement, isn't this supportive demonstration of the value that the Scottish Government places on apprenticeships? Cabinet Secretary, and I would stress um, the, uh, the definition of brevity is being observed in the breach here at uh, Cabinet Secretary. Um, I, I do welcome this as very positive news, Presiding Officer. Investing in skills across a person's lifetime, I think, is critical to our future productivity as a nation. This is also underlined by our commitment, though more broadly underlined uh, by the National Strate uh, Strategy for Economic Transformation. I was delighted that in May of this year, SDS undertook a reallocation process and issued updated contract awards for over 2,000 new modern apprenticeship starts to providers with strong evidence of employer demand and where there is a need to support critical skills in the economy. Our priority as a government, though, absolutely continues to be to ensure that apprenticeships are of the highest quality and, of course, lead to sustainable employment opportunities. Pam Duncan Glancy. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. The percentage of women starting modern apprenticeships has dropped. One reason suggested for the drop was the increase in construction-related apprenticeships, where women represent just 2.5% of starts. So does the Cabinet Secretary agree that more women should be encouraged to take up roles in construction, and can she set out what steps it will take to increase female representation in the sector? 
Secretary. I thank the member for that question. I think she makes a really interesting point. So uh, overall, I think 38.1% of starts were female and 61.9% were male. However, she is absolutely correct to point to the industry-specific challenges in relation to gender. I am more than happy to take that point away the members made today, particularly in relation to construction and uh, related, as it is badged, that has seen the largest proportion of new starts. And it is really important we see more women coming into these fields. Of course, we also have over 22% who have been supported through health and social care and in IT additionally. But I will certainly take the point the member has made away from today's uh, portfolio questions and raise it with the uh, Minister for Higher Education and SDS respectively. Question two, Stephen Kerr. I to ask the Scottish Government what it anticipates the outcomes will be of the proposed summit on tackling violence in schools, which was announced by the Education Secretary on 24th May. Cabinet Secretary. Planning for engagement and the summit on relationships and behaviour is currently underway. I intend that the summit will be held as soon as is practical, noting that we are just three weeks away from the end of the summer term. The summit will focus on practical support at classroom, school and local authority level to make a difference on this issue. And I, it will hear from young people, parents and carers, schools, local councils and unions to discuss how to tackle the issues. The findings of the summit will form part of the broader evidence base being considered, of course, by the Scottish Advisory Group on Relationships and Behaviour in Schools. Stephen Kerr. Well, I'm disappointed by that answer because it is two weeks since the commitment was made to set a date for a summit and we still don't have a date. And I thought we had all agreed in this chamber and all the parties that this was a matter of grave importance and urgency. There doesn't seem to be very much of that from the answer the Cabinet Secretary just gave. And I hope that she will not hide behind the actions or inaction of her officials. I say to the Cabinet Secretary in all sincerity, please do not let down our teachers. Please do not let down our pupils. Please do not let down our parents. Do something. When will the Cabinet Secretary commit to tell us when the summit the date that the summit is being held. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank the member for his question. Um, prior to portfolio questions beginning for the hearing officer, the member asked me about the Hayward Review, which of course uh, will publish in the next few weeks. I'm very conscious that in the last two weeks we've spent a considerable amount of time, two weeks ago now, debating behaviour. Last week we debated the national discussion. In two weeks' time we will debate the Hayward Review. We also had yesterday the publication of the Withers Review. There are lots of different things happening in government. I'm not necessarily sure the member's question is fair in that respect. Now, what I have committed to is action before the end of this parliamentary term, before the end of uh, the session. I think that's hugely important. So to that end, I have convened, and I will convene rather, a head teacher task force to consider the specific issue of consequences and exclusion. I've also asked Education Scotland to work with every local council to identify good practice in the meantime, so that those findings can be discussed as part of the summit and shared across the country. And I'll be more than happy to update the member in the next, before the end of this parliamentary term, so before the end of the summer term, with a date for the summit itself. But I'm very cognizant. Now, the member makes a number of comments around about teachers. Uh, I don't know if he speaks to teachers regularly. I do. This time of year is very stressful in schools, and I think it's hugely important we remember that the system Mr. just now... Mr Kerr, you've asked your question. Let the Cabinet Secretary respond, and let the Cabinet Secretary please bring your response to a, a conclusion quite quickly. Thank you, Presiding Officer. In attempting to answer the question, what I was trying to outline to Mr Kerr is that schools are overloaded with lots of things happening at this current time. I don't want to add to that burden. I've outlined some of the reports that are coming to fruition in my response to Mr Kerr and to Mr Halco Johnson. I've committed... I'm hearing the member commenting from a sedentary position, Presiding Officer. Can you resume your seat, please, Cabinet Secretary? Mr Kerr, I have warned you before. You can ask the questions. You don't then provide a running commentary on the responses. Cabinet Secretary, I've also appealed for shorter uh, responses to the questions. I'm now going to ask for a supplementary briefly from Willie Rennie. The Cabinet Secretary will have um, read in the National Discussion Report last week about major concerns about the prevalence of harassment, discrimination, bullying and violence in schools across Scotland. So the situation is urgent. She talked before about bringing forward perhaps the survey that's due to report in the autumn. Has she had any success in being able to expedite that? I, I thank the member for his question. So I think he refers to the behaviour in Scottish schools research. The, because of the way in which that evidence is gathered in relation to qualitative and quantitative data, apparently, according to my officials, I am not able to bring that forward. I have tested this with him and I actually did that before the debate we held 
two weeks ago. What I am keen to do, though, is hold this uh, convention of head teachers before the end of this term, so in the next three weeks, to talk to the specific issue in relation to exclusion, because I think there is a challenge here at the current time. The members, given some of the challenge from the national discussion report that we discussed last week, and of course we will have the Hayward Review coming forward in a couple of weeks' time, which will look at the qualifications right across the piece. So I'm very mindful that the system has a number of different reports coming to fruition at the current time. I take Mr Kerr's point and Mr Rennie's in relation to urgency. I commit to Parliament to do just that in relation to bringing head teachers together on this issue before the end of term, but I'm not going to overload schools with this before the end of their summer term. What I will do, though, is undertake to give Parliament an update before the end of term with a commitment to a date for the summit. Thank you. We are going to need more brevity in the responses, Cabinet Secretary. I now call question three, Jackie Dunbar. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how secondary school pupils in Aberdeen will be supported through the launch of ABZ Campus. Cabinet Secretary. I welcome the launch of the local authority-led ABZ Campus in Aberdeen City. The ABZ Campus will aim to broaden the curriculum options for pupils in S4 to S6 and give them access to a range of learning options which are directly linked to growth sectors. The pupils have been supported throughout the application process and through the free bus travel available to under 22s have had the opportunity to visit the campus ahead of the launch. I'm very pleased to note the partnership approach taken through this initiative, including the involvement of employers through DYW North East. And I welcome the opportunity this creates to help young people develop their vocational and technical skills preparing them for the next step in their journey to fulfilling and rewarding careers. Jackie Dunbar. Uh, thank you. The ABZ campus is offering a diverse range of courses across areas like engineering and construction to science and social subjects and dance and drama. And I hope everyone will join with me in wishing those involved every success as they embark on this exciting new chapter. Um, you've explained some, Cabinet Secretary, but can I ask uh, if how it is expected that this innovative idea will offer new benefits and enhancements to the young folk in Aberdeen. Cabinet Secretary. I thank the member for her, her question. I am very pleased, of course, to uh, welcome the commitment to the ABZ campus, which is being led uh, by the local authority and a number of different partners. And I would join my colleague in wishing the young people of Aberdeen every success as they take part in this new learning opportunity. I look forward to seeing the positive impacts, and certainly as Cabinet Secretary, I will be looking to consider any lessons we might be able to learn from this new partnership approach, particularly as we take forward the outcomes from the Hayward Review, as I've alluded to in responses to other members this afternoon. Question four, Russell Finlay. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on any discussions it's had with Renfrewshire Council regarding Dargavel Primary School. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government are taking seriously the uh, capacity issues at Dargavel Primary School and we continue to have regular discussions with Renfrewshire Council about the primary school. The previous Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills met with uh, representatives from the primary school and from the parent council with Neil Bibby and also with Natalie Dawn um, as MSPs and had, I am told, constructive discussions. I committed in the chamber last week to do likewise and to take forward these issues. Russell Finlay. Thank you. Uh, SNP Renfrewshire Council built a school that is half the size it needs to be. This catastrophic and wholly avoidable blunder risks harming pupils' education and it will cost taxpayers £75 million to put right, but parents tell me they have lost all confidence in the Council and they feel that the Council's £75 million plan is flawed and risks repeating the past mistakes. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what she intends to do to ensure the Council does listen to parents and does not waste even more public money? Cabinet Secretary. I thank the, the member for his question. I recognise this is a very serious issue um, and I don't shy away from that as Cabinet Secretary. Of course, the local authority has a key role to play in that regard and I haven't yet met with the parents and carers, so I'm keen to hear from them directly. I am told that the Council has continued to engage with uh, the Parent Council and has also created a dedicated web page and an email address for any public queries, but I think, presiding officer, it would be remiss of me to comment further at this time without meeting with the parents who have been affected by what is, I think, a very serious situation. And briefly, Neil Bibby. Thank you, President Officer. Dargavel parents have expressed no confidence in Renfrewshire Council, the Chief Executive and Director of Education. Given this, would the Minister agree with me that the review initiated and paid for by Renfrewshire Council cannot possibly command public confidence? 
Cabinet Secretary. I thank the member for his question. I know that Renfrewshire Council admitted that they made an error when determining people numbers, of course, for the new school back in 2017, and at that time they apologised to, to parents and carers for significantly miscalculating the projected pupil role. I'm not going to comment, I think, on the authenticity of the independent review thus far. I am keen to meet with the member and, of course, with the parents who have been affected by this and to discuss that matter in more detail. Question five, Faisal Chowdhury. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to fund skill-based courses and apprenticeship that led to professional qualifications. Minister Natalie Don. Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Government have agreed the Skills Development Scotland budget for 23-24 and SDS have completed contract awards to support up to 25,500 new modern apprenticeship starts in 23-24. This will include modern apprenticeships and craft roles. Faisal Chowdhury. Uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, Skill-based labour courses positively contributes to industry recruitment. A recent report published by the CIPD found that the biggest gaps in the recruitment are in technical, vocational and uh, specialist skills. It also funds that bringing employers and the education system closer together can result in benefits for young people as well as the organization involved. Can the minister... Uh, uh, what, asset, uh, what assessment the Scottish Government have made on the reduction of skills-based courses on the recruitment of new workers in this vital industry? Minister. Thank you, President Officer. Investing in skills across people's lifetimes is absolutely critical to our future productivity and success as the economy and labour market continues to evolve over the coming decades. This is underlined by our commitment to a skilled workforce set out within the National Strategy for Economic Transformation. Our priority now is to ensure that apprenticeships are of high quality and lead to sustainable employment opportunities, including those craft roles. A couple of supplementaries. First, Jim Fairley. Thank you very much, President Officer. Minister, my understanding is that Lancia, in my constituency, currently helps to provide modern apprenticeships and other training in a range of areas which, pro which promote traditional and rural skills. Can I ask the Minister what level of support the Scottish Government has provided Lancia in recent years? Minister. Scottish Government and our agencies continue to engage with key stakeholders, including Lantra. Scottish Government is committed to promoting inclusive growth and creating opportunities for all to ensure a vibrant, sustainable and productive rural, rural economy, including through apprenticeships. I'd be happy to ask the relevant Minister to write to the Member with further detail on the support for Lantra. Thank you. And Pam Gosso. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Traditional skills-based apprenticeships are vital to supporting a just transition and I know from meeting with apprentices that there is a perceived stigma associated with doing an apprenticeship. As opposed to going to university, this lack of parity between post-school learning pathways is clearly reflected in the Withers Review. Does the Minister accept the finding of the report that there is not a, not, not a, parity, sorry, there is not a parity of esteem? And what action will she take to rectify this? Minister. Absolutely. We, we thank James Withers for his thorough and comprehensive review, which provides critical and compelling insights into the current delivery landscape. The review does highlight challenges within the current system and makes recommendations on how it should change to ensure that it's fit for the future. Um, we have absolutely heard <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, loud and clear the calls for significant reform and will not shy away from decisions which will deliver better services for learners and employers. However, decisions about reform of public bodies cannot be taken lightly and we will need to consider the practicalities of implementing its recommendations with the affected bodies, unions and legal professionals to inform our next steps. Question six, Ben McPherson. To ask the Scottish Government how it is supporting the City of Edinburgh Council with the Trinity Academy redevelopment. Cabinet Secretary. All local authorities in Scotland have a statutory responsibility to manage and maintain their school estates. However, through the £2 billion Learning Estate Investment Programme, the Scottish Government will provide significant financial support to the City of Edinburgh Council for the Curry Community High School, Liberton High School and Wester Hales Education Centre projects. These were identified by the Council as its priority projects for investment. Scottish Government funding through the Learning Estate Investment Programme is intended to augment, not replace, local authorities' own investment in their school estate. Ben McPherson. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and recognise the Scottish Government's strong record in investing in our school estate, particularly since 2007. The capital investment that has 
been put into Trinity Academy already at the Bangham facility has made a tremendous difference for the school and for the wider community. But the next phase of redevelopment will provide a new community campus with a much needed contemporary learning and teaching space for a 1,200 student role in an area of growing population in our capital city. Therefore, I ask the, the Scottish Government to continue to support the City of Edinburgh Council through its Schools for the Future programme uh, and that Trinity Academy's redevelopment uh, is completed as part of that as practically uh, uh, achievably as possible. Government Secretary. I thank the member for his question. We will continue, of course, to support the City of Edinburgh Council through both the previous Schools for the Future programme and also the current uh, learning estate investment programme that I alluded to in my initial response. Through Schools for the Future, the City of Edinburgh Council received funding of £63.8 million towards its four priority school projects. And as mentioned, we are providing additional financial support through the LEAP funding for a further three projects. Question 7, Daniel Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government how many modern apprentices working in construction from the 2017 and 2018 cohorts are still in training. Minister Natalie Dawn. As of the 31st of May 2023, there are 28 apprentices out of 801 from the 2017 cohort and 205 apprentices out of 862 from the 2018 cohort that remain in training. Daniel Johnson. I thank the Minister for that answer, but construction apprenticeships are meant to take four years. And yet the information just provided demonstrates that for those in the 17 and 18 cohorts, the apprenticeship is lasting up to five uh, 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 five or six years. Now, in my discussions with the CITB, their concern is that the changes to the assessment required by the SQA in 2016 has had a detrimental impact in the ability of these apprenticeships to complete their training on time. So will the Minister commit uh, to looking at implementing a temporary PDA in line with electrical apprenticeships? Will she also review the assessment that was implemented and will she meet the CITB to come up to a satisfactory arrangement on these measures? Minister. I thank Mr Johnson for that question. The, <clears throat> the challenges experienced with the 2017, 2018 and 2019 construction apprentice cohort completing their apprenticeships are being carefully monitored and as the member has rightly noted, these delays are related to changes in the qualification assessment introduced in 2017, the knock-on effect on college capacity to deliver these changes and the impact of COVID-19. Work has been undertaken by partners to address and reduce this backlog. We have seen some improvement, however this is not progressing as quickly as it should be and the Scottish Government Government is continuing to work closely with all agencies to improve the rate of completion while maintaining the quality of the apprenticeship. I also understand that Mr Day is alive to the need to address this backlog and, having, and has had useful dialogue with CITB and is seeking to meet with SQA to explore solutions for clearing this. Thank you. Question 8 is in the name of James Dornan. It doesn't appear he is with us, so that concludes portfolio questions. Uh, there will be a brief pause before we move on to the next item of business to allow the front benches to change. <laughs>